does rely on momentum and having a good start to really arrive in the score series. Well, and Zach said as well in that interview before the game that they play best when they're into it emotionally and embedded into the game. So hopefully they can get a good start in that regard. But we're underway. Semi-finals, Godsent versus Immortals. And already a nade gonna go toward the drop position. That will do decent damage onto Twist and Pronax. Pronax without armor takes the brunt of the damage. He's gonna be the utility player with the single smoke as they try and walk toward this A site. An aggressive stance in A. Usually we talk about that retake potential on the A site. They've got three players in the site itself with Phelps looking to avoid a flash. There is not one, but a decoy instead. It's Henny, first damage dealt. Again, remember that nade went in. That's gonna play dividends when they walk into the site because they're already weakened up. That makes Phelps seem easy to get two headshots. Bolts. Henny, each coming out with one of their own, and it's on a Schneider to pull this back. One HP to do it, he's found one kill, but unlikely with one HP, he's gonna be able to close this out. They know exactly where he is, and Showtime just waits for him to appear. Very simple round there from Godsend, going for the fast A attack, one smoke towards Highway, but as you said, Immortal stacking that up. One player in the form of Phelps towards MBK, he picks up fast two frags, and then it's just a complete shutdown from that point. Great crossfire coming in from Immortals, and a good way to kick things off. We talk about the momentum. And getting the CT pistol on cash is a good way to start a series. But here we go then, it's going to be Godsend. Not getting the bomb down in the pistol, so they will be semi-forcing up into this. It's going to be Palf and Pronax without the armor. They've got Eagles across the board here. Can be a very powerful pistol, especially on cash. Lots of long grain jackets to go for those picks. You can see Palf there rattling off some shots through the smoke, seeing if anything is available here. But um, Immortals, they don't have to go heavy rifle setup here. They know it's going to be a, a pretty easy prospect holding this one off. You can see no grenades from Godsend whatsoever. That's an interesting idea. Normally, if you're going to force in a second, you want to have at least a couple of smokes just to take away some options for the CTs in terms of their crossfires, but you know, have full control of the site so. Door open. Lecro had a chance to try and isolate with Phelps if they crossed over on AMA, and they would have found him in it. The forklift position, they've had the information that he's there, but the Deagle can't find the angle. Quick pre-fire shot from Lecro. Phelps is going to try and take advantage of that smoke as well. Just sit on the edge of the doorway when they do walk in, flash out. That's going to push them back slightly. It leaves Lecro on his own to try and find this. But again, you're, as you say, with these deagles, they're trying to play the angles. They're trying to slow this down and play the pick strategy. And armor on three of them does work against the MP7 and MP9, but everything else will be able to penetrate that quite easily. There's no reason for the CTs to face at this point. They're just working together using the flashbangs they have available. That's a nice little push there from Phelps to take down Pronax. But the thing is, Godsend can't really segregate anything on the map. They're just trying to take really audacious picks at the moment. It's just not working out for them. Here we go then. Twist of an opportunity onto the B-bomb site. Doesn't land the shot just yet. And the CTs know what to do right now. Run the top down, make them commit to a bomb site before they really face. Bolts does take down Pelf. That was one of the unarmored players, so MP9 doesn't matter the range, and it's going to be closed up quite easily as the M4 and the UMP pick up kills. So a little bit of money going the way of the SMG start to build up. Again, they did have the FAMAS and the M4 in hands as well. Yeah, well, I have to say, I feel like that's a waste of a force by most of the, the top teams will make sure they have the tech nines and body armor and have the smoke and flashbangs just to get yourself onto a bombsite there and actually allow yourself to take advantage of that situation. That's really optimistic, I think, just to have the Eagles and nothing else. But regardless, we go into the third round. This should be a clean sweep here for Immortals. Just Glocks and PD-50s. They have got a couple of smokes in this round. This is where they really could have used them in the last. But it's looking like they will be focusing towards the B-side potentially with the bomb there. So maybe smoking towards upper and CT spawn, rushing the site with the PD-50s and just trying to get a plan down in any capacity. Here we go, Lucas, way on the other side of the smoke. I really feel like he's going to be a thorn in their side here. Opens things up, gets the first frag, but only manages to get two here. That's going to be Pronax, the last remaining player. Schneider, who got the only kill here for the terrorists. I don't think Pronax will be able to get much more. Do not. Showtime closes it out. So they do get the 3 nothing start. Again, the force by. Plants off this. Going to leave them still with... Presumably, five AKs, and that's exactly what they come out with. Two AWPs to go against them as well. Oh, yes, the double off setup for the Immortals there can be very powerful on cash. It means you don't really have to focus too much on towards middle. You can have the AWPs towards quad and the B side as well, and have a lot of rifle setup moving around, trying to predict the movements of the terrorists here. We'll have a look at the initial setup from Godsend. What an aggressive default here. Three players towards the B storage. Gonna be pushing through smoke as well, but it's showtime. He's waiting with that AWP towards checkers, looking for that first frag. Might find it as well. That's so desperately close. There it is. Pronax does eventually show himself in that position, and showtime smartly immediately changes his angle, stays dynamic, stays unpredictable. Misthrown Molotov. That's a fine angle to hit. 
Well, that's a dream scenario to see at this point. Have one player facing aggressively, you get the first pick, and then you don't need to commit to any sort of angles from that. You can fall back, force the terrorists to make the next move. That's exactly what they're going to do. Twist will be leading the charge out towards middle. They're going to get the control here, but with the man down and uh, the utility starting to fade, they're going to struggle to get onto a site here, especially as we can see AWP setting up. It's Tenny towards the A site and he's watching towards highway. There it is. Like a hawk, they're going to have a tough time here. But it looks like they're maybe going for the B split. Twist holding towards middle. Two players towards B storage here. 45 seconds remaining, but no real ground gain so far. And B split's not a bad call out of this either because they've rotated Lucas over to watch Z connector from the back of it. He might be able to pop out and do some damage into mid, but it Phelps. completely leaves him alone. Showtime inside of the site. You're right. Phelps is going for this flank. So if they can slow it down, they have rotated Lucas back, but missed shot from Showtime. They're going to advance pretty quick on this. They're going to take advantage of it. Lucas gets caught because of it. Showtime, he has to make up for lost ground, but the nade's going to take him down. And Phelps is just getting into this smoke out. He's going to try and take advantage of it. Come in a little bit early, but Schneider's going to spot him up coming through. Trade though. Bolt skips right back in and burning one alive before they could even get the plant. Again, there's not going to be the extra injection of cash toward Godsend. Well, there's a lot of cash going in favor of Immortals there. That was the bonus round we normally discuss. They did have a double up setup, but they had UMPs and an MP9 as well to actually win that round. It was that aggressive play towards the checkers. This is a, a shot on your screen right now. Get the first kill, fall back, get that advantage. And Showtime struggled on the bomb side there a little bit, but hit the shot that counted on towards Lecro. And then the backstab coming in from Phelps there. Finish things off. So nice work from Immortals. 4 0. And it's going to be another eco for Godsend at this point. Just Lecro with some body armor the deagles once again it's the lack of utility is going to make things very difficult in these rounds as soon as they establish it's just pistols the cts will be falling back here but there's a nice aggressive play from phelps negating that smoke to see this boost we saw yesterday this is actually originally brought into the game by pronax funnily enough but it's going to be phelps using this to get that first pick takes down twist and that's all you have to do in this scenario worked out they've got pistols as well and he'll be falling back so again first picked for immortals and it costs them nothing We'll try and resume duty inside of that A main position and go for the split with middle. Schneider's going to be the first one to get toward the highway, but Henny staring it down again from inside A. Realizes two have gone that direction, can't find where Pronax is, and they try and flash themselves into A main. That goes the other direction for Pauf, so Pronax can suddenly be a, a bit of a nuisance in this. They're going to fade away from that initial pick and try and spread the defense, pull this back where they can. Pauf's on 4 HP, which is a bit of a problem considering they're on Tech 9s against the weapons that... Immortals do have, and Showtime's gone passive, but does still have the AWP. Nice shot from Pronax. That opens up Vents. I was going to say AWP toward the B site. There it is. Finally, Puff goes down. That could have been done with a pistol for all it mattered with the 4 HP. But nothing to cover this cross because there's no utility, and Bomb has gone down inside of the site. They've got oh. to come in. The no scope from a distance. Showtime. The second shot. Quite pretty considering you missed the first opportunity, but that does mean in that missed opportunity that Lecro gets a plant. So finally, Godset get that going for them with the max loss round bonus. They'll be in a good position to pull up AWPs themselves finally this time. It'll be interesting to see who actually picks up the weapon. We discussed this uh, yesterday, actually. It's whether Schneider or Twist is going at it. Twist, I'd say, is the more favorable AWP, but sometimes he has a confidence issue, doesn't feel it on certain days. We'll see. Oh, it's a double AWP setup. Here we go. So both players chiming in. Why not? T side is kind of unorthodox, but if you're going to slow things down and try and work the picks and counter the double AWP setup with the CTs, definitely can be viable. Let's see what they can decide to do with this. And um, we'll see whether Henny or Showtime decide to do something aggressive. They've got decent spawns, there, especially Showtime. As he makes his way towards B. It's going to be a fast drop. It was. No one's there. He's actually pushed further. Showtime's all the way in B main right now. Oh! He finds Pauf. Very aggressive. You called it good spawn for Showtime. Yeah. He was actually blind when he pulled the trigger then as well. So that's great. Doesn't manage to find where the AWP is. But Pauf, a huge scalp on the team to take down. It's another five on four in favor of Immortals. And then once again, once you get that man advantage, you pull back and make the terrorists commit to a bomb site before you actually let them run into your crossfires here. But any. Gonna be throwing the incendiary onto the boost that shuts down Twist. And he has to fall down and reposition himself. They can reboost up. Seven seconds later. Phelps has taken advantage of this position though when he knows that Molotov's there, that they are forced back. He can get up closer in middle. It's gonna be Twist with an AWP. Close angle to play. Misses that first shot. Phelps is actually sneaking in around them right now. This is perfect because they're so distracted, but he can't land it. Position given away, Nade. It'll do further damage, but still doesn't take Twist down as it can't get through the door. Twist on the other side of it. It's obscured, but it is Henny to pick up Schneider. Lecro's gonna come back around, try and bail them out. That does free up Phelps, and now opens up the opportunity to go back over toward B as they fully rotated, letting Phelps try and anchor down that position, but it's 41 seconds. So Showtime does have to give that attention and puts himself in the bottom of highway. Well, that shot should secure the round at this point. It was a little bit hairy for the season at one point, having no players towards B, but Henny gets the kill, and that's gonna be a four on two.
Burnout to Lecro, do have the bomb in hand, and Lecro towards middle, needs to hit the shot if there's any sort of chance, but the pistol takes him down, showtime, and Henny to finish things off. Six, nothing now, Godsend struggling immensely, it's the aggression of the style that around is locking them in, and they're actually losing the first pick every single time here, they had the double orb set up this time, but uh, now we go into round number seven, maximum loss bonus as you mentioned before. Still ringing true. We're going to have AKs across the board here for Godsend. I'd like to see something a little bit more of a set piece map. The defaults aren't working out, but they're not getting the, kit, the, the kills at the start of the round. Hold the default to start. But it doesn't look that's going to be coming in. It's maybe just be a B rush here. Trying to lock down the early orb. Oh, Phelps is getting aggressive again inside the middle, but double smokes out. He can wrap back through the vents. They'll hear this though, but it doesn't matter. Showtime. He's got the first shot. Now Phelps comes in. Perfect time. He is overwhelmed slightly, but Lucas found another one under Pelf in the middle of that. So Lecro's got the only kill in return. It puts them down a man. Molotov off so they can't cross into the site. Buys Lucas a bit more space. He'll watch the inside of Checker. And look how fast they slow Godsend down. Yeah. They boost Pronax back up to give them an opportunity to try and find a pick and work back over toward the A site. But the first rush, that initial play that they wanted to do, like you say, go for that fast off, completely shut down. Oh, well, it's going to be a four and three. Still is viable for Godsend. But they just haven't really got much of the map to play with here. We can see Pronax has made his way towards middle and towards our vent area. He's hoping that someone walks into his crosser at this point. But once again, the CTs don't really need to commit. They don't need to go scouting towards middle. They have got control of the situation. A is in a retake position. You see Bolt's there towards CD spawn, watching for any crosses. But uh, terrorists have one smoke remaining. So just to take away that information for the CTs, it's be difficult to even get to the bomb site here. So what's the next play? Potentially a B split. We can see Schneider. He's going to be the point man here to try and get something rolling. Taking his AK towards highway here. That's a little bit of a high risk maneuver considering how they've been getting locked down by Henny. But 30 seconds remain. I think it's going to have to be the B side. They have let Pronax stay inside that vent at least for a second further, I imagine. Okay, so they are going to go. I was going to say they might let Blackrow try and get information just in case, but with 16, they've got no choice. Flashback through. They want to get back in the site. Lucas still here, but it's showtime. That does make that work as he gets aggressive. First kill goes his way, but he's still smoked off of this. Lucas down. They're going to try and go for the, amaz uh, the immediate plant. Excuse me. Showtime's going to get in a position, but can't deny it. And Schneider, he might do better than that. It's down to just bolts. He picks up two. He does find him in the end, rotating over, but that gives away the position that he's up on top of heaven, and Pronax has gone missing. And he's got perfect position to take this out. Finally, Godsend get on the round. A little bit of a desperate round there for Godsend. They needed someone to step up, and it's Schneider to deliver the goods this time. He finds two stellar headshots there on the B side. They were running out of time, and someone needed to make something happen. Drops out of checker room. It's the two headshots. The bomb goes down. His pronouns with a decent positioning there. He's towards the spawn. Completely outplays bolts there. He had to assume the player was on the bomb side. But we go into round number eight. Problem is for Godsend now, that was another 1v1 situation, and they've lost the. Uh, Five stack loss bonus as well. So he's back on the AWP, but Lecro, he's struggling a little bit with that. SMG himself, double up setup, still ringing true for all mortals. The big round for God's sake, they need to win this to avoid a potential double eco situation. Schneider and Lecro out towards Squeaky. They do have the smoke off to cover off Quad. Hulk's not going to take advantage of this though and try and clear in toward Forklift. And Lucas and Phelps have gotten close to that position. They're not playing from the truck. They're playing aggressively. Bolts finds the opening. Pelf now gets into a position where he finds two. Pronax getting bolts. They're going to try and go for the fast plant. Nearly caught off by Henny in doing so. And they now know he's at truck. Good shot to take down Twist, who tried to have the AWP on him in return. It still leaves them one man short and no kits on this retake. So a chance for Godsent to avoid that reset, as you say. But with Pelf and Pronax low, you have to be weary of these nades. And that first one going to go a little bit far to find the low HP player in Pronax. It's Lecro that it did get near, and he's the high. He's got 78 still left over, and already they're going to bail out on this. They can't, with no kits, afford to go for this any further. Yeah, I think that's the right call at this point. Just going over the bomb side, walking into those little tight crossfires. The terrorists have set up on some bombs down. Save the AWPs, keep the bank strong. You still have a huge lead here going forward, but Godsend, I think these are the kind of plays that are going to win them round. Instead of trying to work the defaults and allowing everyone to take one-on-one -on -one duels, let's just... Jeez. Did not expect that. Okay, that's <laughs> happened again. That's that's Malmo all over again. <laughs> it gets you. I, I actually forgot about it that time too. I okay. heard them warm well, up this morning. About... I heard them practice. Oh, my heart. One of these Fight days. Stops. Yeah, you know what? We got to put it in our contract that when Henry's casting, that can't happen because you are actually going to legit have a heart attack someday. 
Anyway, what was I saying? That's the kind of rounds that uh, Godsend uh, should be running over now. The defaults are working out for them. This is simple execution of the decide. A couple of smokes, a couple of flashbangs. Like your star players actually get in these situations where the bomb's down, they can actually clutch and hit some shots. So that's great from Godsend. We're going through round number nine. Still money available for Immortals. That double off setup obviously stayed, but they are struggling a little bit more here. Bolts with the 5 7. Lucas just on a famous here. They have got kits this time, and that lack of utility that's been expended most of the start of the round. You see Henny going a little bit aggressive there towards A main. He's actually going to be focusing all the way down. So he's got great vision here, but it's a fast beat play from Godset. And Lucas does manage to hold it together with the FAMAS. He's down to that five bullets left, though. He hasn't got time to get the reload in. He hasn't gone for it. He may have done so when we switched off. Either way, it's down to just twist as they shut down everything on the entrance. And he's got the AWP in this position. Again, they did avoid that reset. I had to buy in a few extra guns in this round, so their money hasn't stabilized. It's only 24.50 for him. This could be worth the save. He swapped it over to at least the M4 to try and make a play close range. Has the bomb back in his hands. 54 seconds. He might as well at least investigate what he can out of this, but he has to be careful not to overcommit as well if he can't find early picks. Yeah, well, we saw Godsend once again going for another fast play. Group together, keep it simple, but Mortals had such a decent read in that situation. All gains away storage. He's just focused oh. on the B side in Showtime. It's a lovely shot there on the twist. That was just pure spam. Off. You saw the first bullet hit, and I'm sure the thought was, he's not going to do that again. He walked straight into it. He's surely not going to do that again. Well then, this should be an eco here for Godsend after a couple of decent rounds in a row. Trying to keep that fast paced up. Doesn't really work out for them this time. Like I said, it was handy getting towards that A storage area, getting a ton of information. The teammates is rotating over towards B. Falling through the vents as well. Complete spray down and back onto the Deagles. No utility once again. And uh, thank you for boosting up towards middle here. You can see a lot of players focusing on the A side of the map. Really smoked out for now. Phelps looking to push through the smoke potentially, yeah? They'll go with what they can. Schneider holding angle with it, with the Deagle, excuse me. Twist to run over as that's held, but can't get the shot on his showtime. Does do a bit of damage to him as he breaks out that vent down to 57. The AWP player on the B site stays alive for Immortals. Back over to A now. now they've gotten made out of this, though. They have pushed them back far enough, so that was successful to let Pronax and Twist get better positioning to try and split this A site, but Phelps has already flashed into A main. He could be a real nu nuisance in this play. He's in the open, but gets towards lockers before Pelf rounds the corner, but now he's sitting duck. He's got his back turned, Phelps. He's pushed through and not even considering the possibility. Thankfully, the pistol can't land a shot. That leaves him alive to take Lacro. So a shot that could have been, he's so low on HP. Finally, Pelf will take him down. A good hold from Henny behind the E-Box, waiting for the highway presence. And he's still Schneider. They've done well here. Get this down to a one versus two in the eco situation. They've picked up that gun again because Phelps was so far forward. It's easily recoverable. No armor, though, to work with, but does still have the bomb. What can Palf even do here, though? If he had a flashbang or a smoke, it'd be possible to cross to the bomb site. He knows Henny's watching his angle like a hawk, but is he? He's actually rotating. What are they going to give him an opportunity to plant here? This is a, a bold move, and they're actually going all the way to B. What, what is this called? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, I guess they just assumed he was going in. There's no real reason there, but I guess sticking together is fine. But just allowing him to plan here is a little bit of a misplay, in my opinion. But the issue, though, is sticking together is fine, except that Henny has an AWP and Lucas is on 15 with the AK. So Palf has a chance here. If the AWP misses. The M4 can capitalize on this, and the aim punch might not matter against 15 HP. Thankfully, Lucas reads it well with that Molotov going out. But that was far too close. It was so certain he was going to be. There was no real reason there. But, uh, you know, like I said, it, it, in those two versus one situations, it is better to stick together. If you haven't got a feeling he's going towards B, make it uh, one versus... Uh, make it one, two versus one instead of two, one versus one. So that's the best way to play it. So that's the right call, but why they went to B and they were so sure of it, I'm not so sure of myself. But still, round number 11, we do have a buy coming in for Godsend. It's going to be five AKs across the board, no orbs. They did try that double orb setup on the T-Sat, did So, let's see how this works out for them. Chris spamming through, hoping to get... A bit of luck on his side. Phelps again is going to get aggressive behind that smoke in mid. And Henny's there with him, so they could go for a counter boost. That's going to be denied. And an aid on top of it. Phelps takes a little bit of damage. He's actually elected to go through. That's going to give up that he's there, so smartly gets away while he can. They won't have the read on the second player, though. So Lecro's going to get one here easy. Down to 6 HP as soon as he walks over Cubby. EWP, though, close range. Henny's going to hit two, and he does it. 
Brilliantly done, and he reacts in time to turn around, but Palf just clips him through the edge of the box. That'll take him down and bring it back to three versus three. Very flashy play there from Henny. I have no idea how he got the second kill. That close range AWP potential working in his favor. It's going to be a three on three now. One minute remaining for the Terrace. They've only got a Molotov remaining, though, so they're going to have to go towards B. Showtime's waiting for them, though, at the back of the side. If he hits his first shot, he's going to buy himself enough time to have his teammates rotate, but they're pretty far away. You can see they're both committed heavily towards the A side, so he's actually on his own in this one. Waiting for it. Holding the closer angle does give up Pronax an entry point onto the back of Checkers. Twist finding bolts. That won't let Lucas rotate, so it is all on Showtime. Does drop the bomb on the way through, but 35 seconds chance to recover it easily with Pauf getting that kill. And now it is on Lucas, and Twist will have had the information that he was trying to rotate over. Pauf's not going to plant alone in the case that he's gone early. But as soon as Twist arrives, he crosses back over. They'll get toward the headshot position and easily put this down in a default safe plant. Lucas has a kit and full... HP to work with, one Molotov as well to try and flush out any of the T players. See if he gets a read toward exactly where the bomb planter Pauf has gone, but so far he's not exactly certain as he's still looking at the big box in the back. As soon as he crosses over on tree, Twist is going to be waiting with this information, and there it is. Perfect lineup, great crosshair placement. Yeah, lovely stuff there. That's a, a very strong setup there from Godson. And yeah, time to play. We're getting a play into towards CD spawn. That covers the angle from upper and the spawn area itself, obviously, as well. But then he's got a perfect crossfire to the bomb side if he does try to get his way onto that area as well. So 8 3, Godson find their third. And I think the mortars have been broken at this point. Finally, money has been chipped away enough. It's going to be PT 50s and Deagles. No utility purchase. It's a flashbang on Henny. But it's Godson there in the three on three. Played that very nicely, I have to say. Got some positional control of Checker Room. Twist making a nice play on towards the A side. Hits a headshot. And the B split comes in. Showtime coming in here. One shot and then comes down. I'm going to commit to this with three players coming through squeaky. So look for smokes to go off toward the quad position and a fast entry point. That's exactly what it was. But Bolts, he goes down. He can't hold it off with the pistol. Twist able to pick up the second. And Henny's got himself in an interesting position inside of these smokes. But they spot him up. But he's on five HP before he even gets exposed. It's just showtime. Good shot on the entry with the USB, but not likely he'll achieve much more. Can't pick up a rifle off this. No kit, no armor, full save. And down he goes. Steiner took his time about doing it, but still gets it done nonetheless. Money's sort of amazing for Mortis. They've been relying pretty heavily on this double orb setup, and that's not going to be available this time. You can see it's actually spread pretty thin here. They've got two SMGs, an MP7 and a UMP, a Famus, no kits, and these are the kind of rounds, Matt, you need to go a little bit more aggressive there. So maybe push two into the squeaky door, those SMGs, try and find the first pick, get an AK in hand. Something needs to happen here. They can't sit back and allow Godson to work these picks here, especially when they don't have the AWP. So let's see what they decide to do. Looks like aggressive play towards B. This is what I was saying. They need to do okay with the first pick, but the flashes will hold them off. They're struggling a little bit here. May have to fall back. Bit confused. It looked like Phelps and Henny were going to go aggressive in mid as well. So good pick up by Phelps with the UMP and trying to get a boost. But Henny stayed far back with that MP7. I would have liked to see him get a little bit closer. Either way, Pronex out does compensate the offset one kill. Bring it in. Bomb planted open. They can try and play this from a main. Lecro as well at quad. They can go for the boost. Twist is a little bit low on HP. So it'll be Lecro that goes up if they do it. They're going to do it exactly right now. Pronex will get the information on highway as well. So they'll have two players staring that down. Lecro finds the shot from that position. What can these SMGs, or rather, I guess, upgraded now to an AK on Henny, try and accomplish? Good pickup. Wow. They find two. Lucas and Henny, the twins, on Q, both finding one together. Palf, though, does have the angle held. Remember, planted very open inside of A main. He's got Henny on the cross. And Lecro's still here. Time no ticking. Time. There's no kit. They can't get this. They're going to try and get on it, but that's desperate at this point. Lecro getting that kill. It's done. Showtime. Best he can do is take guns out of their hands. He's going to actually get him down because Lecro's forced to stay on the site, so he will die. But oh, they pick up the round regardless. There was nope. no explosion. There was, there was fire, I could feel it, but there was no Big Bang. I'm disappointed. There was no Big Bang Theory, God is real. <laughs> See? A God discussion sends. for another it all time, works perhaps. Out. Yes. Chewie thinks he's real. Well, we're going to round number 14. It's going to be another EK here for Immortals. That's this great mid-round calling from Godson. They, they got the call to aggression towards B. Heavy aggression, in fact, and then towards middle as well. They have three players going in towards A. Fast out of squeaky door. Took advantage of the AK-47, so another good reader. This is working out so much better for Godson here. Just keeping together, fragging efficiently, but all of a sudden, though, Immortals show up with the pistols. Lucas takes down Powell for now, all of a sudden, they have that she have got the man advantage here, but still a lot of work to do. Heavy damage inflicted for the CTs. Oh, it's twist with one, but Henny does get back in. So Pistol's able to pull this down to a two on two very early. A minute and 20 still left and a massive exchange inside of middle, but no guns available to Lucas or Henny. And Henny's sitting on 20 HP, neither with armor. 
Managed to slip over into this A site, though, and interestingly enough, that's exactly where Godsend's headed. So, Pronax opening that door, they'll get confirmation that there's a presence from the T side on the A site. That smoke's effectively irrelevant because both players are well and truly inside of the site. Beyond that, we'll see if they check this off correctly because out toward fence, Lacro is going to be exposed. He pulls the nade. He nearly gets taken down because it's the Deagle from range. But again, it's Hany on such low HP. He's got to peek this almost perfectly. He's got to nail the headshots when they walk around. He's done enough damage, but they won't find it. Lacro just sits back and waits, and Hany guesses that they're trying to rotate and doesn't find them. Just the pistols in hand there for Morsa. They do manage to find three kills, and there's a good read towards the end. Both players on the A side with baiting towards the MPK position, but it doesn't work out for them. Godsend prevail, and we go into round number 15, finally the double orb setup. Back out for Immortals, that's what's worked for them so well, but once again, they don't have those diffuse kits. They have a lack of grenades as well, so they need to be relying on the frags. We'll see if... It's been Showtime has been going mostly aggressive for them. He'll be going towards B once again, going for that first pick, but not going to have any presence there whatsoever, so we never fast mid play. Chris goes down first. Micro's trying to find that spam into the corner. It's Henny that gets powerful. Schneider not really doing much other than waiting for a B push. We haven't really seen that except in times of desperate measure. So Mortal's still sitting back inside of the B site. He has to go join his teammates now, Schneider, and make a play. They do have three smokes still to work with, which is enough on the A site if you can get one out toward the top of highway and potentially even just a second at quad. You can still make quite the entrance, especially with Bolts playing so far back. It would effectively then just be Henny and Phelps to try and negate their entrance. Schneider jumps across, tries to get the better angle so far. No smokes deployed. They're going to play this straight up on the picks because they want the advantage to work back in their favor. And Pronax finding Phelps. This gives them better chances still. There's the smoke, finally. That's from the doorway. Lycro gets bolts. That's the player back at truck. It's all on the Henny. Close range. AWP, but does drop Pronax. Bomb goes down. He can't reset in time to find Lycro. But the flames will deny him access to the bomb. And he's down to 15. So it starts to favor the CTs more so with Schneider getting tagged up. And Showtime again through the smokes. It's going to be 9-6 as Immortals close out the last round. Getting those nice early picks there. Making things uncomfortable for Godsend. Pronex did what he could from Squeaky Door area. Actually, had a really nice pick towards that forklift area. And uh, all of a sudden, it looks interesting. The 2 on 2 didn't really work out for them. They just had such little HP to try and make that work. But 9-6, reasonable half for both teams. I think Immortals, after having that huge advantage, will feel like they slipped away a little bit from them. I think they were up 6-0 at one point. And it's when Godsend adapted to their play, stopped running to the, the straight up default set, and started working a little bit faster. They managed to string together four rounds and break the economy of the CT. So it's a good adaption from Godsend. Obviously, the first game of the day, it's early in the morning. Just trying to get in the swing of things. Palf getting 10 frags. Actually, pretty consistent across the board for Godsend. No one really stepping up or slacking behind either. But showtime for me, he was great. Yeah, he was he excellent. Decided. He was uh, adaptive, he was aggressive, finding those opening picks time and time again, whether it was towards B or middle. So he's playing very well so far, and it seems like they are finding a bit of flair this morning, and some huge shots from Henny as well in those close range situations. But here we go then. The pistol comes in. Immortals will have a look at the buy and try and work out what they may be up to here. Decoy is coming in as well. And it's going to be very powerful on a map like Cashman. It's one of some of those uh, smokes that can be thrown over the top. Watch the two nades, interestingly, on Godsend. Twist and Schneider have each picked one up. And are they playing close to each other? So far, no. So those are just individual nades. I thought maybe a double nade toward the drop position or in toward a main, potentially, but they've got them spread out. Twist has already thrown his to no avail. There was no one over toward B where he, or excuse me, mid when he did try to throw it. They have come over drop ever since, and he's been pushed back slightly. This is going to give up highway to Phelps and Lucas. They're playing the retake strategy on the A site. Two kits to do so. It's, Pronax has a smoke. Schneider's got the other kit. They can try and go for a potential ninja late last second to fuse. Pronax going to be pushed off this, though, as they get aggressive. They know exactly where he is at truck. This makes things harder still. Lecro, Schneider, both inside of middle. Need to hit these shots, Lecro does. As he just barely bails his teammate out. Schneider went down to 5 HP in that exchange. The bomb is planted, and Henny's playing at the doorway. Or open as well. He can walk in easily without having to have the noise trigger and getting them off that defuse. Boost up. Lucas, he's not peeking just yet. Will spot Lecro late. Good headshot. This will hold them off further as they try and round the corner. Smoke is out. They're going to try and get aggressive on this, and it's going to be spamming from Lucas. They're waiting. Look at the knife. Henny's just waiting. He says, all right, you want a ninja? You want to get a kit? I've got a knife ready, but can he find him? He hasn't yet. No, he kills his teammate instead. That's a bit awkward. He thought he was being clever, but instead he's actually giving them a chance. Second time's a charm, though. He does knife twist, so he'll make the money back, and they will pick up the round. <laughs> I love it. All right, you want a ninja? I'll just sit here. I'll stab anyone who's in that bomb. I don't care if you're my team. You're going down. You're getting shanked. And uh, it was quite a valiant effort there from Godsend. In fact, they had smokes available to actually get it on the bomb. You can see here's the replay right now. 
is swinging wildly with the knife there. Actually manages to get Pronax and a teammate gets stabbed as well. Why not? That's that's actually awesome. I, lo I, I, liked, I liked the thought process to pre-knife that though. Because he knew exactly what they were going to try and do. Well, that's the thing with the pistol. It's not like you have an A game to a full spray into it. You've got a Glock, which is... Uh, since you start missing the bullets, you can't find anything. It's not going to do enough damage to actually take down the diffuser. So that's actually a, a very viable idea. But here we go then. Bolt sent it up the first kill. Gets two as well. It's the aggressive play from the CTs. They haven't actually forced forward on the second round here. Just some upgraded pistols. They haven't got the armor as well. They want to make sure they have those grenades available on the first gun round. Which you know I'm a fan of, so that's absolutely fine. It's going to be a five on three here. The terrorists have taken a little bit of damage there, but Bolt's going down to 14 HP. Any on 46. They will just be sticking together at this point, making sure they're trading and heading towards the A side. Bolt's holding the flank. Black Row oh, nearly catches the second shot, but it's Pronax by the door. Showtime nails him. He can't land it as they walk by into his crosshair, and it's Showtime again to take down Lacro, continuing on this fine form as he hits 22 kills with that second one on the Schneider. Another impressive round, three total for him that time. 11 to 6 Immortals. Both pistols and ensuing rounds. They haven't been ecoed off this. It's a very, very hard game at this point for Godsent. Yeah, and this is another given round uh, towards the Immortals. It's going to be a pretty much full eco here. For Godsent, they have P250s. 157, actually. It's not as bad as it could be with just the Sun GSP. They have a flashbang as well. That suggests maybe they're going to push through middle, boost up themselves, but it's going to be Henny going nice fast there, looking for the first pick. Shooting on the vents and seeing if he can find anyone. He spots a player towards the sandbag, struggling a little bit against Pronax. And it gets taken down as well. His teammate's taking damage. Phelps burning alive. It's his teammate's Molotov. What's going on? This is absolute pandemonium. Immortals trying to give a handicap back. At least Lucas makes up for it with two good kills. Twist the second of which, but why not? Let's just burn everyone. Let's just nice well, everyone. Molotov there? Let's throw Molotov. I don't know. How did that even go down? <laughs> I'm not asking questions that I can't answer, Henry. But Fultz is going to finally. Advance into middle. Look at Schneider though trying to compensate for this with the pistol. They've given themselves another chance here in the fact that it's three versus three. Very little investment from Godsend because they had to save up to get ready for the gun round. Even if they could pick something up in this, it could be good moving forward for their utility. But Schneider's information here. I like he's not going to push any further, but what they won't know. And this is, yeah, this is the problem. Pauk's going to look the wrong way. They had no idea they were walking out middle. It was the one play they could have made with Schneider where he was. And he's going to try and go for the full rotation through T spawn to beat them toward the A site because Lecro's going to need a bailout. Interestingly, he knows exactly where they are, so on the opposite side of red, it's an unor unorthodox play with the T's coming in from the CT side. They might not get a read on him. Regardless, he does show face, and that's gonna give it up. A good headshot takes down Lucas. Showtime is gonna answer once more, though. Again, it can continuing on this form. 24 kills now. Another crazy round there. Frodax opened things up and actually did a ton of damage to the second player. Actually gets taken down by his own teammate, Molotov. I'll be interested to see. Well, that actually oh, okay, so he tried to bounce it off the top. Of and he missed it. Yeah, so he actually completely roasted his teammate. There. there was no exit strategy whatsoever. Down he goes. Um, it's going to be 12-6 now, the first gun round coming in. Godsend, though, still a little bit limited. Haven't got the AWP, but they're going to have five rifles and a decent amount of utility here. Let's see whether Henny can open things up. He has got the orb. Molotoving towards checkers to kick things off, and seeing as there's a boost coming in at the start of the round, not going to be happening this time. But look at his vision gathered from the CTs, twist, pushing through to A storage. Not spotting anyone there, so he can focus towards B. But uh, at the moment, he's powerful there by himself. Yeah, there's a double flash in. And the third player to support that push in toward A main in case it didn't go well. Because even a trade in that situation at A main means they can try and act quickly on the A side. So the third player's there is the anchor. But now they kind of give that position up. Pronax instead, though, he's gone through squeaky. He's out toward A long right now. So if they rotate back over, he's got prime position. And he's also going to have the noise trigger if they do get that direction, so they can afford to put Lecro and Twist at the bottom of middle and stack up toward this B. Give Pelf a little bit more of a aiding hand here. It's Twist to find the opening pick. And finally, Godsend can start to stabilize in a round. Well, we have got Bolts. He's in a decent position right now. But Pronax all the way towards Squeaky Door. And he's going to find him, though. Good play, and that's going to bring it to a 4-4. Four four. Like we said, the CTs are to get that opening pick. Don't really need to commit those situations, but that's going to level things out here. 40 seconds remaining. Some other T's may be going towards the A storage. And it's showtime trying to work the first pick here. Smoke on highway. Lacro's going to play above that. I guess with Bolts, it's a great position towards Checkers. He's got so much information gathered here, but the problem is we have got Schneider waiting on the other side. Good trade for Lacro, but Schneider, perfect position. Sees the gun barrel through. Good response, at least from Lucas, but it's still a two versus two bomb down inside of the site. They have to try and find a great shot from Lucas as Pauf shows himself at heaven. And they are already deep in the site with Lucas grabbing the bomb. It's Bolts to go try and hold off against Lecro, and they'll have heard him drop down. 
So this becomes a much easier task of trying to locate where Lecro is. The flash doesn't really work out to allow Bolts to peek, but he's found the corner, and Lecro's got a read on this. He's going to look into it, can't necessarily find it, but does there! He knew the whole time where Bolts had gone, and now it's just Lucas left on the site. Low HP, just 10 to work with. Doesn't spot his shoulder as he gets around, but he knows he hasn't crossed over, so he's got to be there somewhere, and Lecro's going to find it. It's a big play from the young man. Two versus one situation in that first shot. Great awareness there. Could sense the baits coming in from the bomb site. Hits the first headshot and 10 HP. It's not really much Lucas could do to finish things off there. So it's going to be the first round. And right for Godsend here, but still not another wood just yet. They do manage to pick up an AWP, but going down to a one versus one, they are limited in terms of the economy. So if they were to lose this round, it could mean a double eco. So still a lot of work to do. Great out. Really nice play. He's coming to his own. In the last few tournaments, uh, he has been a standout player for Godsend, has to be said. I thought at Malmo, he was excellent. Yeah. I thought he was very good. And he, quick Molotov, that's in toward the sandbag position, then they go for the boost, but Pronex, again, is going to get aggressive. They flash in, and they've got Lecro and Pauf both out toward this long, squeaky position. Showtime's waiting for the push through, but a smoke out. Pronex just takes a bit of damage, goes down quite low, in fact, to 16. But they haven't yet spotted the other two players aggressive on A, and they can't find a shot, though. They've got to fall away from this. They'll leave Pelf with the pistol because, well, why not? He's got to get in some sort of position to take advantage of the lack of weaponry. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. That's why they go aggressive. They're trying to get that first kill in their favor and just have something to work with. Even though they won the last round, they are. Got to have one player on a pistol. That's Pelf. He's still have a ton of information. He's, he's actually pushed up all the way towards that squeaky door area. And now it's up to the terrace. With mid control as well to work out their next move. Henny with the AWP. He's been taken down to 31. Phelps waiting inside the vents. Much, much, much easier to see through it. He may get presented Twist's backside, but thankfully for Twist's sake, he elects to stay inside of the site itself and not back into checkers to find an alternative angle. It was a good attempt by Immortals to take over mid control early, and they were successfully get bolts into that position now where they can anchor it off because with the push out towards Squeaky, no one was really there for Godsent. A boost up for Pronax, who's gone to 16 again off that peak. Way out toward T spawn. That's perfect for him considering he's low HP and the time's running low. He really could do something with this. This is perfect though from Bolts as well. He yeah. checks it. That's the best spot to see it from as he walks up highway and Lecro's too far away to do anything about it on the trade. Better shot from Lucas. He'll drop a truck and Palf, he's still way out in no man's land trying to make this pistol work. He might be sneaky enough to find one quick kill on Showtime. That'll give him a weapon to work with. And complement that with the kill his teammate just achieved beforehand. It's down to three versus three. There is two kits in play. Palf and Twist are the ones Holding on to them in possession, and Twist gets Henny. Now Palf can try and walk back into this. It's a stack behind Quad. They just need to find out exactly where it is. Lucas sprays at the door. That's one position given away. And Twist getting the second on a bolt. They know exactly where it is. They found it out as a team. All three of them stay alive. A great retake. Absolutely. What a round from Godsend. As I said, it would have been double eco territory if they were to lose that round. Someone had to step up. They go for the aggressive play towards A storage and checkers at the start of the round. Powerful, great positioning there. Rotating back into the bomb site. Finds that first kill. Picks up an AK. Makes things very uncomfortable as well. Twist landing some stellar shots. And it's going to bring the scoreline to 12 8. And I think they will break the economy of the monsters as well. Yeah, they get the bomb down. So they'll be fine for next round. So this could be to take a partial by this time. Desert Eagles. Lots of some head armor, a couple of flashbangs here, no smokes to play with, so you'd assume things would be nice and fast, maybe a fast boost towards middle, or just making their way towards A with a couple of flashes. That's to do. Looks like it may be latter. We're next the late smoke this time, but they've already flashed around the corner, so it's the aggression in reverse. We've seen Pronex try and get into that position, but staying passive works against the pistols this time. He's got a swap over as he's out of ammo. That allows Phelps. A quick Deagle headshot. They've lost three players on this entry in the bomb. It's not near the site. It may not even get there because once more it's dropped down and Lecro's there to finish it up. So three players staying alive. Another round for God sent three in a row after losing the pistol and the two ensuing. It puts them in reach. It's 12 to 9. Their money, not amazing, but decent enough. They'll have a round in hand. Starting to stable at least. With three rounds in a row, it means you start getting nice full buys every single round. You've got kits across the board. You have AWP and one round in hand as well. So should be okay going forward, but they're starting to edge their way back into this game now. Mortals on the buy. It's five AKs. No orb on Henny or Showtime. So we'll see what they decide to do. It's looking like an A-sided attack. They're going to be doing the smokes at the start of the round. You see Henny and Phelps lining those up. And it may just be the straight-out play on towards the A-bomb site. That's going to be interesting. They're Pronax in a decent position, I'd say, but it's uh, one and done. Unless you can get a nice full spray down here. 
waiting below the barrels. He's using that. Oh, he's so blind though. He can't find the kills. Now he does. Sprays away. It's two, two, eight bullets left though. He goes for the reload rather than the swap for the pistol. That costs him as Henny walks through. But he's done the work. He's done the job of giving them the advantage. Pout through the smoke. He's gonna find bolts as well, and thankfully so because Henny had just finished taking down Lecro, but he's gone solo. It's easy for Pout to close it out. Well, that is a straight-up set piece there from Immortals. Didn't go for any sort of default to start the round. Straight to the A smokes, and it's Pronax. He's the thorn in their side this round. He's waiting on the other side of that smoke. Waits till he's unblind and goes for the two kills. This is a really nice play from him. It's enough just to get a load of information. He drops the bomb as well. Like I said, went for the reload. Took a bit of a risk instead of pulling out the pistol, but his work was already done at that point. It's going to break Immortals once again. We go into round number 23. They're going to have an MP7 on Henny, which is uh, an interesting idea. Swap that over to the player, yeah, so he gave that to Bolt, he's actually got head armor as well. That MP7 didn't really make any sense for an armor player, but let's see what Bolt can do with it. He'll be heading towards the B side. And actually, four of them are as well. Got well, Phelps watching middle for any sort of rotations, but this is a difficult round for Immortals, I have to say. Flash in Lycro goes for peak, double wall. Double smoke wall, though, in front, so making sure no one's close. Continue around on this. Twist is waiting way back toward the tree with the AWP. They may not get that far though, because Lycro sprayed down three, finally gets blinded up. But Palf's there to pick up the pieces. Good shot from Phelps on Schneider, but all that does is serve to give away his position. Getting this kill distribution on Godsend's side is so dead even. Everyone contributing yeah. right now. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's coming together on the CDR but after losing the pistol game 0 3. They've actually strung five rounds together now, so that's going to be maximum loss bonus for Immortals. But that round was. Uh, very interesting, trying to flash into towards the checkers area and use that MP7 to go in first, but his left road completely shuts them down and we go into round of 24. A pause has come in. Immortals calling that to be tactical, I would assume, at this stage. They're starting to close the gap, God sent just one round in it now. That's good way. Good work for Lecro there. And the interesting thing was that it is five rounds lost bonus in favor of the Immortals right now, but even yeah. with four rounds, usually on the Terra side, that can be enough, but they didn't get bomb plants on the previous three, so this time they'll get a buy, but last time they didn't, and they were short by just a mere margin. Well, it's Henny getting the AWP. The wealth has been distributed around. You can see Lucas feeling the, the pressure of the moment. He's actually got uh, an AK, like a grenade, so he wants to get armor right now. I think he's deciding what's going to be best for them. This T side has been pretty difficult since they got off the pistol rounds and we'll see what they can decide to do. I guess it's the perfect time to work out whether the set piece is going to work. We said they're the kind of team that like to be explosive and have that flair. I think it's the fast boost towards the middle. That's where they're going to get most of their rounds and trying to stick together as a tight unit, just like Godsend adapted to. This, the defaults weren't working out for them. They start doing fast little set pieces, just a smoke towards the highway, flashes the Molotovs towards the site, stick together, allow your star players some position to find the headshots there. If you're just working defaults every single time, you're going to get shut down, especially if you don't have the other... Eight, the AWPs, but this time though, Henny has got one. So maybe they will try and allow him to pick. The time will tell. 25 seconds remaining. And the problem is though, we saw it, we saw it yesterday, Pronax is so good at calling the CT side. I think this team, that's when they really come into their own, on the CT side, that's when he really has good reads on terrorists, and he'll be pushing in aggressive and trying to find the first pick, so watch out for that this round. He gets the time to pause around, have a little think of how they'll be adapting to what he's doing so far, so this could be interesting for them as well. And the other thing about Pronex, too, it, it's not even just the setups that he creates. He understands how to utilize teammates to the best advantage of helping each other. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to, to call positions. It's another to say, I need you to buy a flash because I have this in mind. He's got a set play from the very offset of the round, so... Yeah, I really wouldn't be surprised they did something a little bit on Orthodox, maybe three pushing B storage or send the York towards Squeaky or just to take down whatever Immortals had in mind. Don't allow them to actually run their default, the set piece there you can find. Yeah, Squeaky well, Door. Yeah. It's going to be Pauf and Lecro to lead it. Showtime is waiting for this push, though. This is actually quite smart. This is a good counter read. They know they've been aggressive at Showtime. Perfect lineup on that crosshair placement. He's even expecting the second man in Lecro, and he's got that as well. But will he expect a third? Schneider's going to go out here. This is a bit unorthodox to commit this hard. It's all in at this point because they have to pull back the difference. So why not continue to push? Showtime, though. Why not continue Keep to tear him down? He's going to continue it on. Pushes forward that time. He's finally caught off guard. Oh. But that was a good read. Four players for the CTs towards Wiggy Door. They finally get the kill there. Oh. And it's going to be Pronax. He's being legged by the AWP. And as we go into a four on one. And there it is. Henny hit him the first time when he jumped over. It was the tag, the leg shot. But they close it out on the second try. 
Mortals finally pull back around as it was a chance to tie up the game for Godson. It goes 13-11. That's one round, though, after five. So this is the reset potential. Thankfully, they kept four alive. That was a big play by Showtime to read this. Uh, yeah, we, we said that Godson were going to try and mix things up. But I didn't think they'd be sending four players all together or try and get this one kill with Showtime. They didn't even have to work for it. No tactic required to just hold up and wait for the CD to run into your crosshair. Perfect. And it's going to be 13-11 now. It's actually broken the economy of Godsend here. Just Lecro with the M4A4. The rest of his teammates do have pistols available. It'll be a 5-7 P250s and Deagles. No real stack coming in here. It's more of a default play. Pronax is stack on the A side. But at this point, I think Immortals are going to be aware of the situation and will be just holding up slightly. I think they can get a read as to what kind of buy comes in. There's a Deagle shot fired by Twist. They're going to be aware that it's a difficult buy, at least. Lecro been very good this game. He's towards B by himself with the M4, so he does have an opportunity to do something with his weapon. WP from Henny is going to give up trying to find a pick at mid. This is where they look to go toward A. They aren't throwing the default smokes over top of A main that we often see to try and cover off highway. Instead, they're still going to leave Phelps at middle to find a pick, and they're going to go straight in. I imagine it's going to be Henny that they'll send first to try and open up toward Quad with the AWP. And exactly that, he's trying to find the angle. Does find it indeed. Schneider caught in the open, aggressively trying to find information. Leaves Pronax alone now inside of this site. They're going to rotate over, but they're so far away from this. And just that one M4 right now is on Lecro. He's the last to arrive, and Phelps is going to flank him out of the truck. That's down and dusted. All five stay alive. So not only one round efficiently, two now for Immortals. And that builds their economy up very quickly. Yeah, all of a sudden, this is looking quite promising for the Immortals. The pause apparently has worked out for them. Godsend going to round number 26 here. It was uh, Lecro who was struggling for money a little bit, so he's going to have to drop the weapon. They did have money available, though, so that's absolutely fine. No orb, so for the CTs, it's Henny now is coming to life with the orb himself. So I'm sure it'll be more of a default play here. Let's see what Henny decides to do. He's going to be going towards middle, trying to spam through and see if he can find any players towards short there. We have got quite a lot of mid presence at the moment. Schneider waiting for the boost play. And Lecro in the vents as well. Not being shot out, of course, has to hide his position until it needs backup from his teammates. But uh, Pronax is towards mid as well. This is a very focused attack towards mid. And he's trying hit that corner spot. It's a decent effort, but Twist is actually going to go down from that. And he's going to play at lockers. I imagine he'll post up at this position because now he's got so much information on A that they can afford to continue to leave two inside of middle and two inside of B with Lecro in the vents as well. So he's kind of playing both positions, that swing position. And no Molotov to clear it out just yet. Phelps will push it back slightly with some spam. Now the Molotov comes in. And Bolt's getting Lecro. Now they're starting to serve to push God sent back. This is working well with Schneider. Oh, with the trigger discipline, he wants more than one. He's going to get greedy and he'll find... Oh, he won't! Good response from Lucas. I was going to say find what he was waiting for, but Pronax does push back through. He's caught by the pistol in the end of Henny. And it still serves the one-man advantage in the favor of Immortals. And Twist has a long rotation to go to get toward B. And look at the push through. They know exactly where he is as well. So if he's trying to go towards CD Spore, just eradicating him. The possibility to run through and deny the bomb plan here. Two versus one. Bolt's watching towards upper. The plan comes in and Henny with the AWP on the side as well. Very difficult task of a twist. No grenades, no kit available. And he has a smoke blocking his entrance to the bomb site here. And no kit. As he goes in. Checks to the right, finds one, good shot, but will he expect both on the site? Absolutely not. It's going to be map point for Immortals. Map one of the best of three. Mirage comes up next. But a great start so far for the Brazilians. Absolutely. And the loss bonus doesn't work out as effectively for the CTs, especially when we're in the third stage as well. So they go into potentially the last round here. It's 15-11. One more for Immortals. We'll do it. Famous, two Max 7s and two pistols to try and hold on at this point. God sent up against the ropes in four rounds in a row just to take this to overtime and see if they can do anything with this buy. So spray through on top. Red crate. Push anyone back trying to get close. And then Henny with the boost. Again, look at the weaponry. The shotgun for Pronax <laughs> on the highway. Optimistic from Pronax. Yeah. <laughs> Phasing with the Max 7 there. And he's going to be falling back and repositioning himself. That's full mid control. Granted towards Immortals, and they're going to have Henny with the AWP as well. He's more than happy to face towards Highway at this point. He knows money's limited for the CTs. They won't have an AWP, so he's just trying to find any intel. If someone decides to face, he'll rip their head off as well. CTs will be focusing towards B. It's an all-in call. They have no real reason to believe it may be a B-side of attack, but sometimes you just have to make the gamble. 
The running water smokes. That's right. I thought that was the thing. Well, it's the same as I, I can understand Pronax being optimistic that that Mag 7 sounds like a supercharged Mag 7 now. Yes, it's true. It's more powerful. That's what sound does to things. It also allows Powerful to get in position inside of this. Phelps might walk by and actually overlook that position. We'll have to see how that Hello. plays out in the obituary, though, because the flash in and Pronax, he's got two. It is a supercharged Mag 7, but it's answered back. Lucas and Phelps immediately to do the damage in return, and that means Pronax can't upgrade the weapon or hold the position. Henny with Lecro down leaves Twist, no smoke out, but they still find the kill. And it's a one versus three for Schneider. And Mag 7, no grenades, no kits, three players to find in the bomb diffuse. What do you reckon, Matt? Can you do this? I reckon you don't sound optimistic, but I'm gonna have to agree with that. Henny uh, almost catches him on that shoulder peak. He will in the second. And it will be 16-11 for Immortals. Godsent made a close game of it considering the start they had, but it's not enough in the end. Decent attempts in the last round. Pronax pushing in the Mag 7. Could have made things exciting. They said they needed four in a row. They were limited, but uh, still promising storylines for both teams there, I feel. It was a really good start for Immortals there. Started to slip away slightly on the second half, but they did win both pistols, and Godsend will know that. They know they could have got back into that game easily. It was one round that separated them. 